Now, Abraham Lincoln understood the importance of a singular focus, right? He knew that while there were many worthy causes to pursue, slavery took the dominant position in American life. Now, there were two reasons for this. First, slavery was an order of evil unlike any other at the time, right? It represented the grossest inversion of the natural order that all men are created equal, meaning that no man is by nature the ruler of other men in the way that men are by nature the ruler of dogs and horses and God was by nature the ruler of men. In a Judeo-Christian society that understood that people to be image bearers of God, slavery was both an affront to the victims who bore intrinsic dignity and to the God who created them. Secondly, slavery could not be tolerated because of the threat that it represented to natural rights, which remember provided the foundation for self-government. Lincoln understood that in accepting the institution of slavery and the premises that made it plausible in the first place, namely that not all human beings are created equal, our republic would be putting in place the premises that justified our own enslavement because in allowing some people the right to decide who are truly people or not, America was rejecting this idea of natural rights, therefore converting all rights into rights of positive law, rights that come from government. Lincoln understood that in eradicating slavery and ensuring that the promises of the, de of the Declaration were granted to the slaves, he was further enshrining freedom for all people. You see, Lincoln grasped what all our founders took as self-evident, that as long as a pure majority could create or deny rights to some people, there could be no natural rights that apply to all people. By grounding natural rights in our shared human nature, not only was Lincoln eradicating the premises of slavery, but he was also establishing this idea of human equality, right? And Lincoln communicated all of this in one sentence, saying, in giving freedom to the slave, we assure freedom to the free. As slavery was a litmus test of our republic in the 19th century, so is abortion today. Abortion is evil for the same reasons that slavery is evil, right? It denies the personhood of its victims to justify their mistreatment. If the abolitionists of slavery were justified in their narrow-minded focus of ending slavery, for its affront to human dignity and its threat to natural rights and self-government, the abolitionists of abortion are more than justified in doing the same for the same reasons. Any critiques to the contrary prove that such critics either don't believe the unborn to be fully human, or if they do, they don't believe abortion to be a morally equivalent evil to slavery, simply proving they were never with us in the first place. Just as being an abolitionist only required that you oppose slavery and seek its abolition, being pro-life only requires that you oppose abortion and seek its abolition. That's it. And as my friend and fellow pro-life advocate Mark Newman has said, quote, individuals and organizations that make it their exclusive mission to save these human beings from a culture hell-bent on butchering them have nothing to apologize for. They don't need additional causes. They need additional support. <laughs>